Characterization In this lesson, you will analyze how authors develop characters Warm-up Imagine you are going away to camp, and you are asked to send a description of yourself to your future roommate. The only catch is that you can use only five words. Which five words would you choose? If it helps, think of yourself as a character in a novel, and ask, what would a reader need to know about me to understand my actions? Use the notebook tool to record your ideas. Hmm, five words. Hmm, so what would five words? So who, uh, who am I? I am a father. I love music. So that uses two words, love, music, and love, love just in general. Oh, I'm hilarious, I'm funny, and I am compassionate. There you go, five words. Introduction. Literary characters experience change and personal growth just like we do. As we get older, learn new things, and experience life events, we all develop and change. When this kind of change happens in a story, we call it character development. Character development refers to changes in the personality, thinking, values, and outlook of an individual character over the course of a narrative. In this lesson, you'll review different types of characters, examine methods of characterization, and then use what you've learned to analyze character development. Types of Characters Writers use many types of characters to weave their tales. Different types of characters fulfill different roles in fictional narratives. Overall, the purpose of characters is to keep the plot moving forward. Some types of characters will have a greater effect on the plot and are more affected by what happens in the story. Recognizing the types of characters and the parts they play will add to your reading experience. Next, you'll examine the types of characters you might discover in your favorite stories. Characters, both human and non-human, are instruments that authors use to build a story and move it along. They can appear in fiction or nonfiction. In a drama, characters are portrayed on the stage by performers. Characters can even appear in a poem. Although characters appear in all genres of literature, they all have things in common with each other. To begin, characters have special qualities that make them unique. These are called traits. Traits can be anything from hair color to age to likes or dislikes. The more the author of the work develops the character's traits, the more in-depth that character will be. Characters also possess a quality called motivation. Motivation is what causes a character to act a certain way. It's represented by goals, emotions, desires, or needs. A character's past can also affect his or her motivation to act a certain way. For example, the character of Macbeth betrays the King of Scotland because of a prophecy that he would one day become king. In literature, a character's motivation is often opposed. This creates conflict. Conflict can exist as an internal conflict when the character struggles against the self, or conflict can exist as an external conflict when the character struggles against outside forces. All stories have a main character, called the protagonist. The protagonist is usually the most complex character in the story who drives the story forward. The character, or characters, that oppose the main character are called antagonists. Dynamic characters, or 
characters who change over the course of the story. Dynamic characters are typically the more important characters in the story, such as the protagonist or antagonists. Static characters are the opposites of dynamic characters. Static characters do not change over the course of a story. Typically, static characters represent stereotypes and archetypes, where the audience or reader expects a certain canned behavior from a villain or a hero. The character that plays the heel in a comedy is an example of a static character. Flat characters are characters for which little is known. Flat characters serve a purpose and are typically not very important to the overall story. Round characters are the opposites of flat characters. Round characters are fully developed. They are complex and multifaceted. Without characters, there's no story. Think about how all these character traits affect the story. A character's traits or relationships might affect his or her point of view. Motivation affects action and change. A good story is one in which characters act to achieve their goals and change tactics when needed. When we learn to appreciate these elements, characters become easier to understand. Click each thumbnail image to learn more about different types of characters. A protagonist is the main character in a story. This character is faced with a conflict or major problem that must be resolved. One misconception of many readers is that the protagonist must be admirable and heroic. That is not always the case. The protagonist is usually complex and flawed, but relatable. Antagonist. The antagonist is the character that opposes the protagonist and creates obstacles that the protagonist must overcome. This conflict between the protagonist and the antagonist generates action. The action moves the plot forward and captures the reader's interests and attention. A common misconception of many readers is that the antagonist has to be evil. But in many stories, antagonists are torn between right and wrong or are misunderstood. Static. A static character is someone who does not transform or develop over the course of the story. This character's personality doesn't change. Events in the story do not alter the character's outlook, motivation, perception, or habits. Dynamic. A dynamic character is someone who transforms and changes over the course of the story. The transformation can in involve a change in outlook, personality, values, habits, or a combination of characteristics. These changes usually happen because of the character's need to overcome an obstacle put forth by the antagonist. Change is permanent and reflects how the character has developed in the story. Flat. A flat character is one-dimensional and predictable. This character tends to have a single dominant character trait, such as pride, generosity, or greed. This trait often dictates almost everything the character thinks, says, and does. Flat characters rarely change over the course of the story, making them static. Therefore, flat characters are usually only minor characters who briefly engage with major characters throughout the story. A round character has complex personality. This well-developed character po possesses a variety of character traits, which can often be contradictory. For example, a character might be outgoing and adventurous around friends, but prefer quiet time alone when given the chance. Round characters sometimes undergo major transformations in a story, making them dynamic. Whew. Oh. Stock. Stock characters are those that have become stereotypes because they are used so often in many types of stories, stock characters such as the faithful sidekick, the shushing librarian, or the mad scientist are easy to recognize. 
drag each term to its definition. So we have to take these tiles and put them here. So let's look at what definitions are and see if we can figure it out. A character who opposes the lead character and is the prime source of conflict. Well, I know that the lead character is the protagonist. So the post person who opposes it is the antagonist. A character who does not change during the course of a story. That sounds pretty flat to me. A character who has multiple aspects to his or her personality and is unpredictable. You know, they might roll around some other way. Let's say as a round character. Now, a predictable character who has only one dominant personality trait. Oh, wait. One dominant. So they're pretty flat. So it's not that they don't change, or they don't change, but they're also flat. So let's move flat there. A character who does not change. Not protagonist, not dynamic, because dynamic means change. Protagonist is the lead, so it's got to be stagnant. Stagnant. Static. Sorry. Stagnant would work as well. The story's central character who faces the main conflict. That is the protagonist. Bam. A character who gradually changes over the course of the story. You guessed it. Dynamic character. All right. Let's hit submit. Correct. Character foils. A character foil is a character whose traits are in direct contrast to those of the principal character. Putting these two characters in a story together helps the writer highlight their contrasting traits. In Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes stories, for example, Dr. Watson is Sherlock Holmes' character foil. Doyle portrays Watson as an ordinary, warm, and sincere character. In contrast, Sherlock is analytical, brilliant, and emotionally detached. By setting up this contrast, Doyle emphasizes Sherlock's extraordinary skills that are beyond the capabilities of an ordinary person. Some say the term foil originally came from Shakespeare's Hamlet, when the title character says, I'll be your foil, Laertes. In mine ignorance... Your skill shall, like a star in the darkest night, stick fiery off indeed. How does Leslie's character enhance Eric's character in the following passage? So, notice that it didn't automatically play. How does Leslie's character enhance Eric's character in the following passage? Let's say you were going to go through this tutorial on your own because you find my version or my video versions boring. And so for English class, maybe you want to skip it and do it on your own. But reading isn't so great for you. So here is a tool on the side. So slide narration, we can turn that How on. How does off. Leslie's character enhance Eric's character in the following passage? But also click to speak. So now when I click it will speak in one of these two voices. So I'm going to click and it and it should automatically start reading. The building. Leslie was walking slower than a drowsy turtle. He was trying to catch up to ERICS hasty footsteps. Leslie didn't care that his glasses would slide down his nose every so often. His eyes were keenly focused on an open book balanced on his right hand. From time to time, Eric had to pull Leslie away. So it's not an easy way to read, but it can be done. And notice that it spelled out some words like Eric and, and that kind of stuff. So I'll go to reading it even if I don't read so well. You won't laugh at me, so I can trust that I can read without being embarrassed.
His eyes were keenly focused on an open book balanced on his right hand. From time to time, Eric had to pull Leslie away from the traffic. Eric carried a basketball and bounced it on the ground occasionally. The boys, ages 12 and 15, always walked to school together. Each morning, Leslie would read to his older brother or tell him the summary of what was going to be covered in his reading class. Today, he was reading Rocking Horse Winter. Leslie only had 15 minutes before reaching the building that would separate him from his brother. To him, the building was a sign that he was still younger, weaker, and smaller than Eric. The building, on the other hand, freed Eric. He felt less like a big guy outwitted by his little brother and more like the basketball star of the high school. Until it was time to return home again, the boys lived their separate lives. Hmm. So, how does Leslie's character enhance Eric's character in the following passage? So, Leslie reading his to his older brother highlights Eric's strength. Leslie's inclination towards books highlights Eric's athletic nature. Leslie's young age accentuates Eric's lack of experience and wisdom. Or Leslie's slow footsteps shows how determined his older brother is. So we see that the younger brother's inclination towards books and the others, it highlights Eric's athletic nature. Correct. The author paints a vivid picture of the two brothers. Leslie's academic nature highlights Eric's athletic one. While Leslie holds a book in his hand, Eric carries a basketball. As in this passage, authors use foil characters to highlight each other's features and traits. Select the table of contents icon in the toolbar to view your location within the tutorial. Okay. Characterization. Now that you have examined different types of characters, let's consider how we learn who those characters really are through characterization. Authors use both direct and indirect characterization to develop characters and reveal who they are. In this section, you'll explore both types of characterization. Direct characterization. In direct characterization, the narrator of a story declares the thoughts, feelings, motives, and traits of a character outright. The narrator may even make judgments about the character. This kind of direct telling is the easiest way for a reader to learn about a character. Read this example of direct characterization. Ms. Wickwire was a kind and generous neighbor who believed that taking care of others, not oneself, was most important. As a result, she was well respected in her community, but secretly she often felt lonely and a little bit forgotten. So it flat out told us a direct characterization. We don't have to read between the lines about what kind of character Miss Wickwire is. Indirect characterization. Indirect characterization is when the author shows the reader what a character is like through details such as the character's thoughts, words, and actions. For example, imagine that an author writes, Emily skipped all the way to the dock with her best friend, and she didn't have a care in the world. From this description, you can infer that Emily is fun-loving, even though the author didn't state it directly. Indirect characterization requires the reader to make inferences. Let's review the importance of making inferences and examine several methods of indirect characterization. Select the correct answer from each drop-down menu. Blank tells the reader about a character's personality. Direct characterization or indirect characterization? Direct characterization tells the reader about a character's personality. Indirect being the opposite and the only other option, indirect characterization shows what the character is like through a variety of clues 
so the reader can make inferences about the character's personality. So if I say, what's your evidence? Here you would say, it says she is kind. But if I said, what's your evidence? On this one, you would say, well, she gave the pie to a homeless person, so my guess is that she is kind. Making inferences. Writers rarely tell readers everything about every character directly. That's why readers must make inferences. An inference is an idea or conclusion drawn from evidence and reasoning. To infer is to make an educated guess about something. Good readers are constantly making inferences as they read. When you're trying to make an inference, you can use hints from the story. To make inferences about characters, analyze clues that authors leave for readers through indirect characterization. Next, you'll examine the various methods of indirect characterization. Consider what inferences you can make about characters based on each method. By the way, these are some of the, the things that people who enjoy reading kind of naturally do. So if you have a difficult time with reading and you don't enjoy reading, one of the reasons might be because you don't enjoy making these inferences or reading between the lines and trying to figure out what is this character all about. And so when you're reading and you don't make these inferences and you don't read between the lines, it can be really boring because either because you don't get it or because you don't enjoy that task, if you will. One useful method for analyzing characters is steel, which involves examining the following details about each character. Speech. Notice the character's dialogue. The way a character speaks and the words the character uses can reveal the character's personality. Thoughts. Identify the character's thoughts and feelings to understand the character's actions. Effect on others. Notice the effect that the character has on other characters. Actions. Look at how the character acts and reacts to other characters and events. Also pay attention to whether the character has any unique gestures or expressions. You know, my guess is this acronym, speech, thoughts, effect, actions, looks. And looks. Note how the character is described in terms of physical features such as height, hair, and skin color, body type, and so on. I bet there's going to be a question about that on the mastery test. Identifying character traits. Let's look at an example of indirect characterization and how to make inferences based on the clues it provides. Read the following passage from John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. He was not over thirty. His cheekbones were high and wide, and strong deep lines cut down his cheeks in curves beside his mouth. His hands were hard, with broad fingers and nails as thick, and ridges as little clam shells. The space between thumb and forefinger and the hams of his hands were shiny with callus. Based on the description of the character's appearance, what can you infer about him? Well, I know from working that calluses are from hard work. And thick and ridges, you know, maybe his nails are, 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 have been beat up. And then even though he's not over 30, he's got these deep lines. So he's, so he's had a, like a hard life and, and it's showing in the creases. His hands were hard. So, so he's a hard worker. He's tired. He's been, been. Okay. Based on the description of the character's appearance in the excerpt, you can infer that the man is a hard worker. Even though he is young, 
He has an aged appearance, with deep lines on his face. He also has calloused hands, which is usually the result of hard manual labor. Even though the author doesn't directly state that the character is a hard worker, readers can make that inference based on the author's use of indirect characterization. Which two sentences support the inference that Maria is hardworking? Select the correct text in the passage. So we're looking for two sentences. So which of these highlighted sentences lead us to believe that Maria is hardworking? Maria carried the heavy basket of beans she collected and, rather than rest, walked briskly to the peach tree. Well, I don't have to read the rest to know that that's definitely one of them. You know, didn't rest, and it was heavy. Uh, the temperature rose and foreboding thunderclouds formed. Well, those don't have anything to do with her. Ethan, great name, it's my son's name. Ethan and Maria sought shelter inside the house. Okay, doesn't have anything to do with working. Maria lifted the canning pot onto the stove to boil water. Okay, lifting, that's doing work. A canning pot has to be big enough to fit the pot, the cans in it. And if it was full of water, it might have been extra heavy. So that sounds like hard work, just to make sure. Maria and Ethan could sense its vibrations through the floorboards. So that has nothing to do with working. So those are my two. Final answer. Correct. Analyzing characters. In their process of characterization, authors have many tools they can use. These tools often take the form of literary devices. In this section, you will practice analyzing how authors use literary devices to develop their characters. Click each thumbnail image to learn more about how characters interact with other story elements. Plot The story's main events make up its plot. The characters have a huge influence on the development of these events. One example comes from Roald Dahl's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. In this story, the main characters are Charlie and Willy Wonka. The effect the plot sorry, they affect the plot through their actions, reactions to events, and interactions with one another. Willy Wonka is searching for someone to take over his candy factory, which leads to a series of events. Charlie reacts to these events and interacts with Willy Wonka throughout the candy maker's search. Together, these actions, reactions, and interactions whew, drive the story's plot. Setting. The setting of a story is the time and place in which events happen. Often, a story has more than one setting. The characters interact with. For example, in Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, Alice is first seen resting by a tree near her home. Then she falls down a mysterious hole while chasing a rabbit. At this point, she enters a new world called Wonderland. Point of view. Point of view refers to the narrator or the individual telling the story. With first person point of view, the story is narrated by a character within the story who provides a single point of view. A first-person narrator uses the pronouns I and me. The Percy Jackson and Olympian series by Rick Riordan uses first-person narration. With second-person point of view, a narrator addresses the reader directly and describes all the characters and events using the pronouns you and your. The Choose Your Own Adventure series uses second person narration. The third person point of view, with third person point of view, the narrator is an outside observer who describes all the characters and events using pronouns such as she, he, and they. 
Francis Hodgson Burnett's The Secret Garden uses third-person narration. Theme. Theme refers to the main idea, underlining message, or concept that runs throughout the, through a story. An example of how a character develops theme comes from the story Aladdin's Lamp. The main character, Aladdin, learns an important lesson through his many experiences. This lesson, which is that wealth cannot buy happiness, is the story's theme. Now you will read an excerpt from the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian, a coming-of-age story about Arnold, a young American Indian teenager trying to find his way and himself in the world. In the following excerpt, Arnold discusses leaving his community on the reservation to go to school with students who are not American Indian. As you read, look for clues that the author gives to reveal Arnold's personality. Use the notebook tool to record your summary of the excerpt. Match each line from the excerpt to what it reveals about Arnold. Drag each tile to the correct box. Now you will read an excerpt from the absolutely true diary of a part-time in- Okay, so if you were going through the tutorial, you would click on this. This is called a hyperlink. Notice that the cursor changes. I thought it would show up or on the next slide would be the excerpt, but it's hiding here in this hyperlink. So we click on that and see what happens. So here's the excerpt. excerpt. The Absolute True Diary of a Part-Time India by Sherman Alexi. Excerpt. Excerpt means it's only a part. What's your name? Penelope asked. Sorry, please let me continue. What's your name? Penelope asked. Junior, I said. She laughed, and I told her and told her girlfriend at the next desk that my name was Junior. They both laughed. Word spread around the room, and pretty soon everybody was laughing. They were laughing at my name. I had no idea that Junior was a weird name. It's a common name on my res, on any res. You walk into any trading post on any res in the United States and shout, Hey, Junior, and 17 guys will turn around. And three women. But there were no other people named Junior in Reardon. So I was being laughed at because I was the only one who had that silly name. And then I felt smaller because the teacher was taking role and called out my name. Name. Arnold Spirit, the teacher said. No, he yelled it. He was so big and muscular that his whisper was probably a scream. Here... I said quietly as possible. My whisper was only a whisper. Speak up, the teacher said. Here, I said. My name is Mr. Grant, he said. I'm here, Mr. Grant. He moved on to the other students, but Penelope leaned over toward me again. But she wasn't laughing at all. She was mad now. I thought you said your name was Junior, Penelope said. She accused me of telling her my real name. Well, okay, it wasn't completely my real name. My full name is Arnold Spirit Jr. But nobody calls me that. Everybody calls me Jr. Well, every other Indian calls me Jr. My name is Jr., I said, and my name is Arnold. It's Jr. and Arnold. I'm both felt like two different people inside one body. No, I felt like a magician slicing myself in half, with Junior living on the north side of the Spokane River and Arnold living on the south. Excerpt from The, Absolute, the Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi. Oh, uh, the, 
Next copyright 2009 by Sherman Alexi, reprinted by permission of Little Brown Books for Young Readers, All Rights Reserved. Match each line from the excerpt to what it reveals about Arnold. Drag each tile to the correct box. So the line, there were no other people named Junior in Reardon, so I was being laughed at because I was the only one who had that silly name. What character trait that does that show? Subordinate, less than, incomplete, self-critical, or uncomfortable? He was uncomfortable. No, I felt like a magician slicing myself in half. With Junior living on the north side of the Spokane River and Arnold living on the south. So, would you say that it was subordinate or less than? Incomplete or self-critical? Magician. I felt like, and then in half, so that's being critical of yourself. My name is Junior, I said, and my name is Arnold. It's Junior and Arnold. I am both. Incomplete or subordinate? I'm not really sure. I might have to look up what subordinate means. Oops. Hmm. I have to just type it in. Subordinate means placed in or occupying a lower lower class or rank. So you've heard from the wrong side of the tracks, or uh, less than because they don't come from the rich neighborhood. And then I felt smaller because the teacher was taking role and he called out my name. So incomplete by process of elimination. Oh no. Which one did I? Oh, I see what's going on here. Okay. I messed up. Let me try again here. But there was no other people named Junior in Reardon. So I was being laughed at because I was the only one that had that silly name. Okay. So critical of himself because he's the only one with that silly name. Okay. No, I felt like a magician slicing myself in half. So half living on one side, half living on the other. That means incomplete, not all in one spot. My name is Junior, I said, and my name is Arnold. It's Junior and Arnold. So not really comfortable being called one or the other. And that they are both, just not being comfortable with it. And that would leave subordinate last. And then I felt smaller because the teacher was taking role and he called out my name. All right, got it correct. Whew. Point of view and characterization. You may have noticed that the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian is told in the first person. This choice allows the author to develop his characters in particular ways. Click each image to learn more about how an author's choice of point of view impacts characterization. Analyzing Characterization It's often useful to analyze how characterization develops other literary elements, especially plot and theme. When analyzing the impact of characterization, consider the following questions. How does the characterization interact with other elements, such as setting, to impact the text? 
How do the characters impact the conflict and plot? What theme or message about life does a particular character illustrate? Analysis In the excerpt from The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian, the setting plays a large role in shaping the character of Arnold. The change in setting from the reservation to Reardon causes Arnold to consider his identity and background in ways that he hasn't before. It also creates both internal and external conflict as he attempts to navigate these two places. These changes and challenges highlight and amplify Arnold's sensitivity and self-awareness. Comparing characterization in different texts. This activity will help you meet this educational goal. Analyze how authors develop complex yet believable characters in works of fiction through a range of literary devices. Directions. Read the instructions for the self-checked activity, type in your response to each question, and check your answers. At the end of the activity, write a brief evaluation of your work. Activity. In this activity, you will compare the methods of direct and indirect characterization to analyze the character development in The Absolute True Diary of a Part-Time Indian and The Building. When you analyze a text, keep in mind how literary devices such as setting, imagery, theme, and plot affect characterization. Determine how each device impacts the character, and note where it occurs as well as any interesting language. Think about how the author uses the literary devices to reveal a character that is complex and believable. Part A. How does the point of view that each story is told in impact the characterization of the main characters in each text? All right, to answer this question, I'm going to look back at the titles and the methods that were used to impact characterization. So the two different texts are and there we go. So, in the absolutely true diary of a part time Indian, the author used, used uh, direct. characterization to tell us exactly um, I'm sorry I got distracted by something as I tend to do in the absolute true diary of a part-time Indian the author uses direct characterization in uh, what point of view uh, in in first person in first person Okay, the author used direct characterization in first person perspective. We 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 um, are directly told how he feels.
Junior tells us directly how he feels. And in the building, that's the one with Eric and Leslie, the, the characterization is in direct. Well, is it indirect? No. It's just supported by is supported through what is it? Third person. We we just hear what they're doing as if we're a bird watching them. So, I believe they're both direct, but I could be wrong. Okay, what specific lines from the absolute true diary of a part-time Indian support the idea that Junior is insecure about his name? So, I would go back to that and say... Um, I feel like two different people inside one body or slicing myself in half. Slicing myself in half. Okay, this is a quote. I copied it straight over, so I have to, I have to uh, add quote marks. I felt like two people inside of one body, and slicing myself in half. Are two specific lines. That support the idea that Junior is insecure about his name. Okay. So I use the information here, down here, to make this a complete sentence, a complete answer. Okay, how does the characterization of Junior and Leslie compare in both texts? Interesting. Okay, remember back above when I was saying that I, I think they were both direct characterization? Well, I'm second guessing that based on this. The characterization, how do they compare? So I'm going to case. So the characterization of Junior is direct. Junior tells us about himself. You know, kind of who he is, what he feels, that kind of stuff. Where uh, with direct character rise character baseball characterization uh character I'm just copying it that's all the characterization of junior is direct junior tells us about himself with their, uh, I don't want to repeat that. Comparing, so word whereas is letting me know that's a key word that means I'm comparing these people with this person, this person with this person, whereas 
Leslie take that and out, whereas Leslie is described indirectly. Leslie's character is described indirectly. Because he has a book, we infer because he has a book reading while walking and tutoring his older brother, we infer infer that he is book smart dirty etc all right so the evaluation okay so I wasn't quite sure before whether one was direct and one was indirect. So I might go back and reread the passages and go from there using that reading tech, uh, uh, skill. Close reading. Ah. I think I push save and exit instead of click the next. All right, there, that's what I meant to do. Summary. Yay, summary. Summary. You've explored and analyzed methods of characterization. Understanding how the elements of a story can lend themselves to characterization is critical to understanding characters, from flat, simple characters to the most complex. Remember that writers can use several tools to develop a character. Speech, thoughts, emotions, actions, and language. First, second, or third person points of view. Plot elements such as conflict and resolution. Congratulations, you've completed the tutorial on characterization. Make sure you really thoroughly understand your guided notes before taking the mastery test. Good luck!